The following is a presentation of Tomorrow's World. Millions of Christians believe that at any given moment, they may be raptured away by God. Even recently, some preachers and self-appointed prophets have declared that the rapture was imminent and that raptured Christians would be residing in heaven as they watch the rest of the world undergo horrific tortures for years. Will Christians be raptured? It is one of the most popular beliefs of Christianity today, but is it true? What the Bible actually says on this topic will startle and anger some, comfort and encourage many, and may literally save you and your family's lives in the days just ahead. Stay tuned. Warm greetings and welcome to Tomorrow's World. Today we're going to discuss a question that we are frequently asked here on Tomorrow's World by sincere and concerned people. Will Christians be raptured? Millions and millions of individuals who consider themselves Bible-believing Christians believe that before the trials prophesied to come upon the world and before the return of Jesus Christ to establish His kingdom, they will miraculously disappear when Christ returns secretly to whisk them away to heaven where they will wait things out for three to seven years as the horrific great tribulation unfolds on earth. As described on the dust jacket of one of Tim LaHaye and Jerry Jenkins' popular Left Behind books, in one cataclysmic moment, millions around the globe disappear. Those left behind, terror-stricken, are desperate to determine what happened? Millions of books have been sold and countless hours spent watching movies and videos depicting a time in which the secret rapture of Christians by Jesus Christ has thrown the world into chaos. Airplanes crash and cars careen out of control as Christian pilots and drivers mysteriously vanish, secretly taken by Christ, causing death, destruction, and confusion. Does the Bible really describe such a time? Does God's Word really teach that Jesus Christ comes to earth secretly to gather His disciples in this way all over the world and whisk them away to heaven for many years, leaving a worsening earth to sort out the mystery of their disappearance? Does it teach about a secret return of Jesus Christ at all? This isn't just an academic question. Recently, popular preacher and self-appointed prophecy interpreter Harold Camping predicted the rapture would occur on May 21, 2011, and many wiped themselves out financially in anticipation of being raptured away. Now, when that did not happen, Camping adjusted his prediction to October 21, 2011. Well, my friends, as I tape this video program today, it is not yet October 21st, 2011. But I can tell you by the authority of God's Word as a minister of the living Jesus Christ that there will be no rapture on October 21st, 2011. And if you're watching this program after October 21st, 2011, then you already know what I have just said is true. Don't be a victim of false teachers and don't fall for a belief or biblical interpretation just because it's popular. On this program where we look at what God's Word says about Christians and the events leading up to the return of Jesus Christ, we will find that there is no preliminary secret return of Jesus Christ. We'll see that the day that Christians do rise to meet their Lord is completely misunderstood and happens after the great tribulation on this earth. Yet we will also see that Jesus Christ offers protection to some Christians, not all, but some Christians during the tribulation and the final events preceding his return. But it is a far different picture from what most evangelicals and rapturists believe. We will also look at which Christians will be protected and which will not. We will also offer you an absolutely free booklet so that you can easily prove these things for yourself. 
our booklet, Revelation, The Mystery Unveiled. This booklet will allow you to understand more than most ministers today who preach false prophecies and false hopes. Now first, let's examine more closely what the Bible truly says about the return of Jesus Christ, when it happens, and what happens to the saints at that time. Will Christ return secretly at first? Here's the passage that many point to as being the key description of the rapture. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and beginning in verse 13. But I do not want you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning those who have fallen asleep, lest you sorrow as others who have no hope. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so God will bring with him those who sleep in Jesus. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ will rise first. Then we who are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And thus we shall always be with the Lord. Now, is this verse really talking about some sort of secret return of Christ before his triumphant public return in power? Let's look at the verse closely to see if it supports the rapture teaching, starting again, this time in verse 15. For this we say to you by the word of the Lord, that we who are alive and remain until the coming of the Lord will by no means precede those who are asleep. Paul says here that this is the time of the resurrection of those who have died in Christ. For the Lord himself will descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of an archangel, and with the trumpet of God. Does this sound like a secret rapture? A secret preliminary return of Christ hidden from the rest of the world? Now, personally, I don't think so. But you know what? My opinions don't count. Let's look further in God's Word for more details. Paul actually describes this same event, the raising of dead Christians and rising to meet Christ in the air, in more detail in another passage, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed in a moment in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet. For the trumpet will sound, and the dead will be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. Notice, those who are alive at Christ's coming are transformed in glory, just as the resurrected saints are. Now, is this done quietly? No, again, just as we saw earlier, this happens with the sound of a mighty trumpet. It happens in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trumpet, for the trumpet will sound and the dead will be raised incorruptible and we shall be changed. Here we see an important new detail. All of this happens at the last trumpet. Now, a last trumpet implies a sequence of trumpets and preliminary trumpets that precede this event. Is there any passage of Scripture that describes a series of trumpets occurring at the end time? Because if so, then we know when the resurrection and transformation of Christians is going to take place. Is it a secret rapture? We'll look at these things next. But first, the free booklet we're offering today is a must-have for anyone who's interested in the prophecies of the Bible in these chaotic and unstable times. All the future events we're describing today are laid out for you in easy-to-understand detail in this booklet, Revelation, The Mystery Unveiled. In this book, the mysterious symbols of Revelation are discussed and explained in vivid and remarkable detail. The booklet also contains this helpful chart laying out for you the exact sequence of end-time events in a way that makes Bible prophecy easier to understand than you ever thought possible. Don't miss out on one of the most popular booklets we have ever offered, Revelation, The Mystery Unveiled. 
There's absolutely no charge or obligation. So call now. To receive this program's offer absolutely free, or if you would like more information, visit our website online at tomorrowsworld.org. Once again, that's tomorrowsworld.org. Or you can write us at the address shown. With this offer, you will also receive your free subscription to Tomorrow's World magazine, full of timely articles and unique insights on today's important issues. Tomorrow's World magazine keeps you up to date with world trends, Bible prophecy, and the very meaning of life itself. Tomorrow's World. Call now. Welcome back. We have a lot more to discuss. As we put the teaching of the rapture to the test by comparing it to God's Word, we saw in our last segment that the Scriptures describe the event of Christ collecting, transforming, and glorifying His saints dead and alive and meeting them in the air was accompanied by the sound of a mighty trumpet, a trumpet which the Apostle Paul describes as the last trumpet in a series. Is there a place in Scripture that describes a series of trumpet blasts at the end of the age associated with the return of Jesus Christ. Yes, there is. The series of trumpets alluded to by the Apostle Paul is described in the very last book of the Bible, the revelation of Jesus Christ. Let's take a whirlwind tour of the end time events described by the book of Revelation in its strange symbols. But to truly understand them fully and how they directly impact you, you really do need the booklet we're offering today, Revelation, the Mystery Unveiled. For now, as we look for Paul's sequence of trumpets that end with a last trumpet when the saints meet Christ in the air, we must begin in Revelation chapter 6. Here we read of Christ in heaven opening up seven seals on a scroll, each representing an element of the prophetic end time events. The first four seals represent the famous four horsemen of the apocalypse. These horsemen representing a false religious power, a global war making power, worldwide famine and terrible pestilence and diseases are said to kill one fourth of mankind, more than one billion people. Next, the fifth seal tells us of the beginning of intense religious persecution of true Christians in which they're killed and martyred by a world that hates them for the message they preach. As we explain in our booklet, it is also a time of poverty, oppression, and slavery, primarily for the British-descended nations of the world and the United States. This is the Great Tribulation, a time of Satan's wrath on earth so terrible that the Bible says there has never been anything like it before. Other passages tell us that this Great Tribulation lasts two and one-half years, after which the sixth seal indicates that there will be miraculous cosmic signs in earth and space, a great earthquake, the sun darkened, the moon red as blood, the stars falling from the sky, and every mountain and island on earth shaken out of its place. These things announce that God himself and Jesus Christ are about to personally intervene in world affairs and begin the day of the Lord's vengeance on earth. But what of our last trump? Where is the rapture? Where is the series of trumpets Paul told us to expect in which Christians are gathered by Christ? at the last trumpet. Those come next. Revelation chapter 8 continues the story. Let's read in verse 1. When he opened the seventh seal, there was silence in heaven for about half an hour. And I saw the seven angels who stand before God, and to them were given seven trumpets. 
With each trumpet blast, global catastrophe strikes. A third of the earth's trees and grass burn with the first trumpet. With the second trumpet, something the Bible describes as a, a great burning mountain is hurled into the sea, and one third of all the seas of earth turn to blood. A third of the ships of the seas are destroyed, and a third of all sea creatures die. With seceding trumpet blasts, the drinking water of mankind becomes poisonous. The sun, moon, and stars are stricken, and global warfare of a magnitude never before seen is unleashed on mankind, including what appears to be a terrifying nuclear exchange that results in the death of one-third of mankind. Meaning that now, at this time in prophetic future, more than three billion people will have died due to these end time events, a total of half of all mankind. It is then only after all of this has taken place that we read of the seventh and final trumpet, the last trump prophesied by the Apostle Paul, sounded by an angel and described in Revelation chapter 11 and verse 15. Then the seventh angel sounded, and there were loud voices in heaven saying, The kingdoms of this world have become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. Yes, at the last trump, with the resurrection of the saints who have died and been martyred in the name of Jesus Christ, and the transformation of those Christians who are still alive at that time, the commencement of the kingdom of God is announced and Christ begins to take the reins of planet earth, ruling and reigning as prophesied with his people, the saints of God. Do you see at this point how the claims of rapturists, however sincerely held, simply do not match the word of God? The resurrection of the saints and the gathering of the saints to Christ in the air happens after the tribulation and after the most cosmically powerful divine intervention in the affairs of mankind to have ever taken place. It is a completely public event for all the world to experience as the commencement of the kingdom of God is announced in power and majesty. As Jesus Christ himself says, for as lightning comes from the east and flashes to the west, so also will the coming of the Son of Man be. My friends, the testimony of Scripture is unified against the idea of a secret coming of Jesus Christ and a rapture away to heaven that occurs years before his ultimate return, no matter what false preachers and prophets may tell you, however sincerely they may believe it. Jesus Christ himself personally in Scripture corroborates this sequence of events in the prophecy he personally gave his disciples on the Mount of Olives recorded in Matthew 24. After describing the exact same sequence of events, religious deception, warfare, famine, and disease, then the persecution of true Christians by the nations of the world and a false religion, which he calls the Great Tribulation, he says in verses 29 through 31 of Matthew 24, Immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light. The stars will fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven, and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he will send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet, and they will gather together his elect from the four winds, from one end of heaven to the other. After the tribulation, all of the tribes of the earth will see him return in power and glory. And then the trumpet is sounded for the gathering of his people. I'm not asking you to believe me. But I am in the name of Jesus Christ and the great God who inspired this book asking you to believe your Bible. It may be very sobering to hear these things, and it should be, 
the events just ahead of all of us watching this broadcast today are truly the most world-shattering events that will have ever occurred on planet Earth. Utter devastation, economic chaos, religious deception, world wars, cosmic events, and the persecution of true Christians. And while there is no rapture before these events, some Christians, not all, but some, will indeed be protected. Turn with me to Luke chapter 21. In this parallel passage to the Olivet Prophecy of Matthew 24, Jesus Christ's words are recorded for us, including some very vital admonition. Let's start in verse 31. So you also, when you see these things happening, know that the kingdom of God is near. Then he commands us, Watch therefore and pray always that you may be counted worthy to escape all these things that will come to pass and to stand before the Son of Man. Yes, some Christians will escape these things. Jesus Christ will protect some Christians while allowing others in his mercy and his plan for them to go through them, to test and to purify them. What makes the difference? On which side of that line will you be standing when the days of tribulation arrive? We'll discuss that in the last portion of our program. But first, let me give you another opportunity to request our free booklet, Revelation, The Mystery Unveiled. This is one of our most sought-after booklets in our entire library. Our longtime viewers know that we never charge for our material, and there is no obligation. No one will request donations of you, and our work is supported by thousands of people all around the world who've already paid the cost of publishing it. Request yours today. To receive this program's offer absolutely free, or if you would like more information, visit our website online at tomorrowsworld.org. Once again, that's tomorrowsworld.org. Or you can write us at the address shown. With this offer, you will also receive your free subscription to Tomorrow's World magazine, full of timely articles and unique insights on today's important issues. Tomorrow's World magazine keeps you up to date with world trends, Bible prophecy, and the very meaning of life itself. Tomorrow's World. Call now. Welcome back. We closed the last segment after seeing that there is no secret rapture taught in Scripture, but yet recognizing that Jesus Christ tells us that some Christians may be able to escape the difficult days ahead. What is he talking about, and why won't all Christians be protected? Revelation 12 tells the tale. The church, symbolized by a woman as it is elsewhere in Scripture, is pictured at the end times as being persecuted by Satan the devil, symbolized by a dragon-like serpent. Beginning in verse 14, But the woman was given two wings of a great eagle, that she might fly into the wilderness to her place, where she is nourished for a time and times and half a time from the presence of the serpent. The time, times, and half a time are the two and a half years of the tribulation plus the one year of the day of the Lord's wrath that follows. That wilderness is not heaven, which is never pictured in Scripture as a wilderness, but it's rather a physical place of safety here on this earth where the church is protected from these horrible events. But not the entire church. Notice in verse 17. And the dragon was enraged with the woman, and he went to make war with the rest of her offspring who keep the commandments of God and have the testimony of Jesus Christ. Yes, some Christians, the rest of her offspring, as they're described, must endure the trials of the great tribulation and the anger of Satan. Why? 
What determines which Christians are going to be protected and which ones must suffer and why must they suffer? Well, there's much more to the book of Revelation than meets the eye. Obscure for those who don't understand it, but plain as day when understood in the light of the rest of the Bible as laid out for you so clearly and plainly in today's booklet offer. Let me preview for you something from that booklet. In Revelation chapters 2 and 3, Jesus Christ describes seven prophetic eras of the church, the last two of which are the Philadelphian era and the Laodicean era, each one playing key roles in the final days before Christ's return. Those Christians whose attitudes match those of the Philadelphian era, zealous, persevering, keeping the Word of God through obedience and faithfulness, are told by Christ that He will protect them from the hour of trial which shall come upon the whole world, the Great Tribulation. However, those Christians of the dominant spirit in the end times, the lukewarm spirit of Laodicea, lacking in zeal, lacking in passion for the things of God, the word of God and the work of God, are told by Christ that he's on the verge of vomiting them from his mouth. He implores them to buy gold refined in fire, a symbol for intense persecution, a seemingly harsh decision, but one made for their own eternal good. As Jesus Christ tells them in Revelation chapter 3 and verse 19, As many as I love, I rebuke and chasten. Therefore, be zealous and repent. I hope you'll request the booklet that we're offering today. Because the headlines in every newspaper seem to tell those of us who are watching these things a sobering truth. The days preceding Jesus Christ's return are rushing towards us. Ask yourself today, right now, what choices do you need to make in your life so that you may be counted worthy by Jesus Christ, so that you may be able to escape those things which must come to pass? Our time is over, but be sure to tune in again next week. My colleagues Roderick Meredith, Richard Ames, Rod King, and I will be back proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom of God and teaching the truth of God's word without apology. We'll see you right here next week. To receive this program's offer absolutely free, or if you would like more information, visit our website online at tomorrowsworld.org. Once again, that's tomorrowsworld.org. Or you can write us at the address shown. To view today's program, order the free literature offered, or for more information on today's vital subject, visit us online at www.tomorrowsworld.org. The preceding program is produced by the Living Church of God.